Hey guys, welcome to the Limitation is a Mirage podcast. Today I have a superhuman guest in Gary Doherty, who is from Think Network. So Gary, please give us a brief introduction. I know that you help people develop their true potential and just give the opportunities that you have people is fucking incredible just from watching your journey. So I'd like to hear it from yourself just so I don't mess it up. <laughs> You're grand. Thanks for having me on, Liam. I appreciate it. I, li- I love your work and supporting you from afar, my friend. Thank you very much. Uh, um, so I mean that as well. Um, yeah, great to be on the podcast. Uh, my name is Gary Doherty. I'm the founder of Think Network. I am also a TEDx creator and TEDx speaker times two. And um, yeah, I suppose I've just followed my passion in life, by which, which includes helping people. I found very early on that the more I help people, the better I felt internally. So you can call me selfish or selfless. I'll let you decide. I don't know, but maybe I'm both. Um, I think you should be selfish with your self-care and uh, and feeling good. So um, before anybody messages me. And, <laughs> and, uh, and I, I found the more I did of that, the better I felt. Um, and I've just made it my fault, my passion. I found my purpose, which is el- um, helping others, elevating and supporting other people to be the very best versions that they can be. Nice. I love I love that you immediately touched on the self care and it's important to be selfish in your self care, because people talk about self care and they overlook the self part of it. Mm. But I would be the same. I would tell people like you you need to take your hour for yourself, mm. work out what you're doing, and then do that again and keep doing it. So whenever whenever you there's just so much to unpack with what you did, and I'm just thinking the like so did you do a TED talk first before you started doing it? No, or, uh, before I started doing what? Before you started, you run the TED TEDx events. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Did I do the TED talk first? No. No. I um I was passionate about the brand, as everybody knows that knows me. And I was I was going to events. I was volunteering at events. I was watching talks from afar. And I started to think, why is this not in my own city? Why has it never been here before? Yeah, like, yeah. and 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 I don't know what you know. And the more I looked at it and the more I looked into it, um, there's very many reasons why it wasn't here, basically, <laughs> right? Long, long story short, without going into the obvious ones. Um, and there were so many people who tried and never bothered with it and hadn't followed through and maybe experienced temporary defeat or failure with it or whatever you want to call it and gave up. And I just decided one day, Liam, I'm going to do that. And that, I'm telling you now, it was as simple as that in my mind. I just decided that just like that, as simple as that. Every people wonder what's the secret or the X factor. There is none. Yeah. It's, it's making the choice. And I made the definite choice to do it. And that was it. That was done there and then before I'd done anything. And that's yeah. what happened. That's how, that's how it happened, believe it or not. I love that idea of if there's not a stage for me, I'm going to create a stage. Hmm. So you, you wanted to do it. People are telling you it can't be done. People. People have, I've tried and these are all the reasons it can't. And you're like, well, that doesn't filter in mine. So I know, I know you have a lot of belief in, in like thinking, mm. thinking for, well, it's in the actual name of your company, but thinking forward and then just going after it. So mm. do you find that's difficult for people? Do you find it's difficult for people that they have an idea? I would love to do a, a TEDx mm. and you're like, well, why haven't you done it? How long have you longed for this? I've thought about it for years. So, yeah. What do you think holds people back from just doing think, what you've done? They think too much. <laughs> they think too much. Thanks a funny word, doesn't it? It's a, <laughs> it's, a, it's a, it's it's a, it's a great word because we should be thinking. We should be thinking creatively. We should be thinking about our wildest dreams. That's where that's where it came out of for me was thinking it was actually came out of for me was to start thinking about the people around me um, and about how I could collaborate more, how I could serve people more, how we could how, uh, come together more. And that's where the, the name actually was born from. And uh, and it's just funny how it's actually been integral to everything that I do and have done, like over the last three, four years, we've had some major, major successes and um well the whole thing's been a major success but um yeah thinking i just think that people think too much (laughs) think think it's like stare stare but but you know stare but don't stare too long 
you yeah. know, um, people just think too much about things. I like to, I like to do it, and and I figured out on the go. Yeah, so the, it's the action that's helping you achieve all these massive, like even some incredible speakers appear at your events. Mm -hmm. That I imagine when you said, "Oh, I'm going to get whoever," they're like, "Of course you are." Yeah, yeah. Well done, and then all of a sudden they're coming back to you here. Can I have tickets to that event now? Is there any tickets left? <laughs> happens all the time. <laughs> happens all the time, my man. Yeah, people people want to support you once you've done what they didn't believe you could do rather than support yeah. you from the beginning. And I love that idea of like action and you can see it. Like I've been following you for a while and you can see, you'll say something, I'm going to do this. This is what's coming up next. And then you start to see, if you follow you, you see the breadcrumbs that create that. And that's one of the things that attracts me to like following your stuff and interacting with you and getting you on the podcast. You're doing what other people won't. So I'm going to ask the question that, that most people are going to use as the excuse, but what is it about you that's different from the normal person? That's a good question. You know, um, a very honest answer to that is like, I don't think I'm better than anybody. That's the first thing, right? Genuinely, genuinely don't. And um, I even rewinding back, do you see when I was a young boy, man? Like, see when I was, I felt different. I felt as if I was different, genuinely. And yeah. I'm not saying I'm not saying that, but that I'm putting myself <laughs> here and other people here. I don't mean it like that. I'm putting. I'm, what I'm saying is, people were here, and I'm feeling. I felt I was over yeah. here. Like I had, I had big friend groups, very popular, had loads of friend groups, but it was like I floated around them all, you know, and. Um, but I definitely felt different. I definitely, for some reason, I felt different. I felt that I had more to give. I had more, and I used to look at, you know what I used to look at? I used to look at successful people that I perceived as successful, which is usually related to wealth and money. And uh, uh, they're, they're obvious things that we look at when we measure success, uh, particularly when we're younger. As, as you get older, you realize that's not just the only measurement of success. There's other measurements. <laughs> yeah. But it's certainly one of them, right? And I used to look at these people and think, I'm not blown away. I used to feel underwhelmed when I got to know them or I was in and around their business and I seen them doing all these amazing, these, the, you know, being very successful. And I was looking and thinking, I used to think, like no, with no arrogance. I used to say it to myself. I never said it out loud. I used to say to myself, I could do that better. <laughs> yeah. like, and it wouldn't have mattered what business it was. If it was a restaurant or a bar or a car salesman or a jeweler. I used to like see things that that I thought, God, that would be so much better if they did that. Or if, if this if this and this and this happened, they would God, they would 10 times what they're doing there. Or I just had that inquisitive mind where I was looking and I was looking and seeing opportunities everywhere, but not having the courage to do anything about them when, yeah. I, was young, when I was young. Yeah. Um, so I don't, that doesn't really answer your question other than I felt different. Uh, yeah. So it, it does the, the feeling different and then the action that you took with it, because there's two ways you can go when you're younger and you feel different. One is you feel different. So you isolate yourself because yeah. you're a weirdo. Yeah. Or one, you feel different. So you start looking and it's, it's the people like yourself that are successful and that have done all these incredible things that when you chat them, they, most of the time they've had massive groups. I was part of this club for a while and I was part of yeah, this yeah. And I did, because you don't feel like you fit in, but you're trying to fit in. So you just keep looking for stuff. Yeah. And then you're coming with life experience that people don't have. So I would have been the same when, when I first started doing the martial arts stuff, I would watch the way they run a club and I didn't have a fucking clue how to run a club, mm. but I'd watch stuff and I'd think, fuck, if you just tidied up this paperwork, that would make that so much faster. And if you brought people in this way, it would make so much faster. But like you, yourself, I didn't have the courage to do anything about it, but I didn't have the courage through lack of education and understanding. So where did your courage come from then? Did you just... My courage came from, I, was, I would say two things. Firstly, I got married quite young. Um, I'm 24, I was 24 when I got married which is sort of young for a man, especially, mm. especially these days. Yeah. Um, but I got married in the millennium, 2000. 
and I was 24 years of age. I was engaged at 22 and, 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 a, you know, father of three at 20, you know, father of two at 26, 25. So I think becoming a father young, it made me think I need to maximize my potential. I need to, I need to do more, be more. I need to be my best. I have family, I have a family to provide for. I sort of, I, I remember going through that transition in my mind when, when I was a very, I, I, when I was a young father and, um, and married, I remember th having this transition in my mind. I need to wise up. I need to be, I need to fulfill my potential. That's the word that, that's the phrase that's screaming at me. However, it still took me years before I actually got to a place where I believed in myself enough to actually fulfill my potential. And that came from a person, from a mentor, through my late father-in-law, who believed in me when I didn't truly fully believe in me. Mm -hmm. He believed in me and he told me that publicly. Um, and I've, I've actually since I created a talk for um, Australia's leading leadership guru, guy called Peter Cox, and he talks about edification, edifying somebody, publicly praising them in front of other people. Yeah. It, it can raise people up to levels that, that private praise uh, would take you to. You publicly praise somebody in front of their peers, in front mm -hmm. of other people, and it makes them feel 10 feet tall. It's like, remember being at school and a, a teacher uh, uh, telling you, you know, how well you've done in front of the class raises you up. You feel great. They tell you on your own, it's not the same. Yeah. You know, I had the opposite in school. They repeatedly told me how badly I did in front of. Uh, well, <laughs> listen, I, 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 didn't, I didn't experience it too much either, brother. <laughs> But when the odd, the odd chance when I did, I remember how it made me feel. Yeah. And you, and, you can and, see how that, just to, just to jump in there, but you can yeah. see how that really sunk in with you because it's the first thing you did on this podcast. Hmm. First thing you did in the podcast was like elevate me by saying that you follow me. And, and so you're already doing that. You're already living that. So hmm. where there's people that, that you chat to and they say, oh, I, this inspired me to do that. And you're like, well, you haven't been doing that, but you can see clearly you're living it. And then a pattern that I'm noticing is every time you have made a next, the next step is for other people more than yourself. So you, so when you became a father and you had a wife and kids you decided to elevate when you seen the people around you weren't having the opportunity of the TEDx. Yeah. You elevated. That's so interesting. It's interesting that, isn't it? And and it's interesting you've noticed that. And I, I suppose that's not a conscious thing that yeah. well, it is a conscious thing, but um it's just part of my fabric, I suppose, that I'm not, you know, it's not at the forefront of my mind all the time. I'm just I'm doing that. Um right. it's not like you're sitting down thinking, right, how now can yeah, I yeah, create yeah. something to help people? It's just yeah. you're doing this stuff and then oh this is helping everybody. Like you're right. I think, I do what I think, Liam, I think when your purpose is greater than self, you know, like, like, if you ask me, what did I want to achieve, two or three top goals, you know, they're, they're to do this, that and the other, and they include my family, they include my network, they include um, a lot of people that I'm close to. And, and my purpose, when your purpose is greater than self, just an, oh, I want X amount of money, or I want to be famous, or I want to be an influencer, or I want to go viral, TED speaker, or I want, want, want. You know, I think when your purpose is greater than just you, um, I think that's a powerful, that's, that's a yeah. powerful, that's a very powerful dynamic to feel and love. And that's what I find, me, myself. There, I'm just thinking that I know there'll be people listening, and they'll be like, but at the start of this podcast, that both of you said about self-care, and now you're saying create your goals based on other people. So yeah. how do you find the balance for someone that doesn't, doesn't get it now? So say just for easy ease of math like some of the clients i have are parents and i was asked recently i talked about how i've i'm doing a 30 day thing just as a test before i'll get my clients to do it mm -hmm. but i'll work out a way that they can do it easier so i'm doing it for 30 days and it's taking 30 minutes of my day and one of the clients was like liam how do you find 30 minutes and i had to point out that it was very important for them to know that i am single have no kids and have freedom to do whatever i want they have kids and a husband and stuff. So how do you find the balance then? Do you think for people to go from 
still looking after their family, still chasing their dreams and then elevating the people around them as they elevate themselves. Yeah, well, first thing is, just when you touched on that there, the first thing is, um, as much as my purpose is very much greater than self, I am the most important person in my life. Yeah. Hands up disclaimer. <laughs> Same. And, and guess what? If you're listening to this, you should be as well. Married, not married, engaged, not engaged, father, mother, not a mother, father, whatever. You are the most important person in your life. Know that. Embrace that. It's called self-love. It's called yeah. self-care. It's called self-image. It's not called arrogance. It's not called selfish. It's not called whatever negative connotation Ego. you can throw at it or whatever you want to do. And I, there's some people don't get that, Liam. Yeah. There's, some, there's some people listening to this that won't get that. And they'll think I'm arrogant or, you know, there's always the 1%, right? There's always, yeah. you know, and I, I had it of recent. I had it on my story on Instagram two nights ago. And, and if you get to know me, I ain't arrogant at all, ever. Genuinely, ever, ever, ever. And um, I, I believe in being humbly confident. I believe in being, uh, I, I, I firmly believe in having a lot of self-belief. Uh, which comes from a lot of hard work um but be the bit the most important person in your life that doesn't mean that other people um suffer or other people don't have the quality of you and what you can bring to the table and what you do for them in your life but just know that you deserve all the abundance in the world health wealth relationships financial whatever it is you deserve it all and that's my mindset Mm -hmm. Uh, um, so that's the first thing. The second thing about time, you know, I think if you want something bad enough, create the time. I, 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 whether you're a mother, father, 10 children, you know, we waste so much time. We waste yeah. a lot of time. Like you talk about people that don't have 20 minutes to do a meditation. What's your screen time in your phone? You're on your phone seven hours a day and you can't make 20 minutes. Just go and do it. I hear so much bs and procrastination all the time do you know what one of the biggest reasons is for failure that uh, and this is this is a statistic uh from um uh a guy that interviewed 500 people that were millionaires and billionaires the biggest statistic was the biggest reason for um or failure was poor decision making and not making time yeah make the time make the time it's something that has to be taught you you have to learn mm. i do i do a sunday evaluation self-evaluation and i tell everybody i work with sit down sunday and take an hour out and just yeah look at your week and see where you could have filled time and like even things like people say they've no time and their sleeping's terrible i'm like well then instead of sitting trying to force yourself to sleep take half an hour out to meditate yeah take half an hour out to yeah. like journal to write something so the the belief that you're the number one, like again, it's a, I think it's, it's a Bruce Lee saying you can't pour from an empty cup or else yeah. it's just an old saying that he said at one point. Yeah. But I would say that to people all the time, if you don't believe you're the most important person in your life and everybody else's, you'll neglect yourself and eventually you won't be working at your optimal level to do the supportive things that you want to do for, for people. Oh, so oh, putting yourself God. forward isn't selfish and it's not ego and i get the same as you i've had it for years like people calling me out and my, my go-to response now is what are you talking about i'm the most humble person you've ever met in your life i'm more humble than and i just keep yeah, yeah. over exaggerating how humble i am Dude, i'm a complete wanker about it and they just give up but they will like you said there's the one percent that people will give you shit about anything that you do oh you think you're class putting on a tedx dairy london dairy who do you think you are and you're like <laughs> Why yeah. you take like you have the time to do this, but you don't have the time to Yeah, and you think you're class and you think you're great and 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 yeah, that's right, I do. <laughs> and, and and guess what? So should you. You should think you're you should think you're great, you know, and you're somebody critiquing me for for being for being happy, for being fulfilled, for being satisfied, for achieving some of my dreams, for helping others achieve, like dear me. Hey, we're in a bad state of affairs when that's what we're critiquing somebody for. You know, <laughs> like I, I don't apologize for that. I do no. feel I do feel great for all of that. And, and and guess what? I feel I feel great 
I agree. I, I just aligning it back with purpose greater than self. One of the reasons I feel so great about it is I've seen so many other people achieving their dreams as a result. And that fulfills me more than any personal achievement. You yeah. know, or, or it fulfills me as much as any personal achievement. Not more than because that's contradicting what I'm saying about myself. But, you know, I get fulfillment. I get fulfillment achieving myself number one i get fulfillment achieve seeing other people achieve number two and 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 the feeling's just the same yeah i would be the same that, like that's why i do what i do seeing the clients hit their goals and seeing the people around you, even like sometimes you just get a message out of the blue you don't know me and i've never liked or shared or done anything on your stuff so you never even know i exist but just so you know i followed your advice in that last video and because of that X, Y, and Z has happened, and it's amazing. That's brilliant. And for, for me, that is really fulfilling. And for the people that do call it ego or, or do try to shoot you down for being happy, uh, if they just did a week of your life, they would go, oh, I see why he, like why he does that, because he's done Liam, all Liam, stuff. Liam, would I, would, Liam, would I tell you, the, one of the reasons I feel so great about everything that I've done is, is it wasn't always this way. You know, I, like there was from 2009 to 2019, I was living off £20 a day for a family of five. Yeah. Work, out, work out it. <laughs> that's some incredible fucking math you're doing there to, to live yeah, on that's that. No, that's no joke, by yeah. the way. That's no joke. I was living off 20 quid a day. You know, part-time work, going to university, uh, minimum wage jobs, uh, all the rest of it. £20 a day. That's what I had for my family for about 10 years yeah you know that, so and then that's and then, gonna weigh mentally like as well it's not just about the 20 pound it's about that's it man you just providing and yeah yeah you realize in life you realize in life who's important what's important um and that's why it's always important to me to give back now that we're doing very well and i do and we there's a lot of stuff that we do that's uh that'll never be on social media mm-hmm. and it's not for social media it's for me and it's for yeah. me to it's for me to feel good. It's for me to give back. It's for me to feel fulfilled. It's for me to help other people achieve their dreams uh, and be fulfilled. And um, and there's you know so so I only mention that I only mention that they they put the whole thing in the context that it's not all about money and it's not all about the glitz and the glamour and social media. Yeah. It's it's about you know you know w- when you do better you can do more for other people too. You know yeah uh, you're, you're setting yourself up to be, do what you you're saying you want to do which is to, all the things that you want to achieve and all the things that you want to be successful in mm-hmm. but also that ripple effect is going to happen in the public eye but also there's a lot it's the same as the work you put in to do this stuff it's not like you just decide one day i'm gonna write for i'll just see in the background featured in think and grow rich so i'm gonna do that yeah. And then it happens tomorrow. That that's a lot of work and a lot of effort. So there's a lot always a lot going on in the background and, and again it's probably why we align so much with, with each other. I would be the same. And people would say stuff like you're always doing the social media, and you're always doing this for yourself. You're selfish. And I'm like, yeah. And but like earlier in that day I might have done something that they'll never hear about ever because it's not I, I don't do it. They, they don't need to, and they don't need to. Good luck, you know, to everybody, and and even even critique that you would get occasionally, like used to affect me far more than it does now. Um, but it is what it is, man. We're all on a journey, and and yeah. listen, and I never said I, I never said I was right about everything. Um, I just I I am true to myself. I have faith in myself. I have faith in my mission and vision. I am confident in my ability. I am humble enough. They know that I'm only a baby. I know I need to learn so much, and I don't. There's there's so much I don't know. There's more I don't know than I do know. Yeah, best yeah. Be, best believe that. <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, for everyone. And I'm just just working hard, man. And I'm just chasing the dream, loving the dream, creating more dreams, and uh, onwards we go, brother. Onwards we go. So, so say I'm listening to this podcast now and then I'm thinking, holy fuck, that's me. I, I have bounced from friendships to friendships and groups to groups. Yeah. I've never felt like I fit in. I have all these aspirations and dreams and I don't have the courage. Where would you tell people to start? How do I find my courage to start? You, you, you have two ears and one mouth for a reason, right? 
start listening twice as much as you perhaps talk. And that's not to say let somebody listen to this that they're low in confidence, all they do is talk. Don't mean it like <laughs> that. What I mean is the, the, the essence of what I'm getting at is use these here. Who are the people that make you feel good after you leave them? Mm-hmm. Who are the people you enjoy listening to? Is it a school teacher? Is it a certain friend? Is it a certain uncle? Is it a certain podcast? Is it somebody you watch on social media? What do you? What makes you feel good? What makes you feel better? What do you enjoy listening to? And then do that times ten. Start looking for the people that that are the people that are good people, the people that are like minded, the people that you aspire to be like or or to achieve similar or to be more than. But benchmark people have people have people that you look and think, God. They're amazing. They motivate me. I would love to be like them or similar to them. Be like yourself, of course, but you know what I mean. Um, yeah. and, and, and start getting that good energy, them good vibes, that good language, that all that stuff that you're bringing in, in through the years um, and flood your mind with all that good, positive stuff. If you don't have anybody like that in your life, start doing it from your phone. There's enough material out there. Flood and dominate your mind with the good stuff. Any of the negative, toxic stuff, whether that be people, noise, or whatever, keep it arm's length. If it's in your own home, that's more difficult, and that's a, that's actually a, another big topic. But if it's if it's actually in your own home, just spend less time around certain people. Don't react, respond, go away and think, and you know, just flood your mind with good, positive stuff, information. Because you'll start thinking differently, you'll start acting differently, your results will start to be different. People around you, you'll start, you you see and think things that other people don't see and think. And that sounds woo-woo, but try (laughs) it, try it. That's That's the first thing, just look at your circle. Who are you with? Who are you with? Who are you around? Who are you listening to? Who are you influenced by? Is it good? Is it positive? Is it stuff that elevates you? Is it stuff that's going to take you towards these dreams and goals you have? If, if it's not cut yeah, learn how to use the on follow button it's yeah, the best mute. button i ever mute. discovered on facebook the i mute was mine <laughs> non follow and and, yeah. and i've talked about about this to people they're like god what a what if they found out i unfollowed them I'm like who, who gives a fuck just uh, this is about you and, and elevate and I, I love that what you're saying there you're just saying if you want to live a better life immerse yourself in things that create a better life like that's be around better people be around better news be around better message be around better books be around better podcasts be around better things that if you want to elevate yourself like like you know it's funny i and i i do this for a living now but like we have a couple i have a couple of mastermind groups and i'm probably highly likely the least educated in any of those rooms, <laughs> uh, I might have <laughs> my <feeling>. own, <laughs> yeah, I might have my own vision and thoughts about things that the other people don't have, yeah, and, and that's why they're drawn to me and what I do. But I'm, I'm definitely, I'm definitely a sponge in those rooms, and I would say to, you, I would say to you to to grow, be around people that um, that that help you to be a better version than yourself. Brilliant. Um, I love that idea of again being the sponge and going in and like what once you get rid of ego. I remember the first time I ever worked with a client and and they had hired me and then they told me what they did and I was like, oh fuck. Mm. Like what what am I doing here? Like he was talking about million dollar deals and stuff, and I was like, I am way out of my depth. Yeah. I haven't even seen a million dollars on a fucking calculator, never mind. <laughs> never mind in a bank. Uh-huh. And then I just realized, like when I got there, I just realized I know what he doesn't know and he knows what I don't know. That's why he's where he is and I am where I am. So that's hey, that's a very, very important point. Actually, very important point. Like uh, I can't go into names or nothing like that. Right. I actually am working with somebody at the minute who is a world leader in their field. Um, like it's in the sporting world and like they're a leading manager of a team that'll be that are World Cup level, like famous TV, all that sort of stuff level, like one probably one of the top 10 managers on any sport on planet Earth right now. You're not naming this person, we've given enough information. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, narrow it down to 10. Google the top 
So, but anyway, long story short, I'm working with this man. Uh, we meet on a fortnightly basis. And it's about his mindset and it's about his, it's all about the, the, the law, all the universal laws and understanding them and uh, fully understanding them. Um, and so that he goes from being a, 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 an unconscious competent to a conscious competent so that every decision awesome. he makes has got rationale behind it because he was, a, he, you know, winning so much stuff and, um, but then, then consciously think about the stuff he was doing everything just touch turn to gold and now yeah. i'm working with him so so like but what i know is very valuable to him yeah yeah you know so never 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 ever ever under sell or under under label or whatever you want to call it yourself and your own ability because you know you highly likely are probably the very best in your field yeah th there's two points that that I wanted to pick up off the back of that. The labeling, I work a lot with labeling because like, what have you labeled yourself and do you actually believe it? Or is this a label that you just have been given? Like I was labeled at school useless. Like you will not achieve mm -hmm. anything. My careers teacher said jail or the army. They were my two choices. Like, Great time. He was nice. Huh? Um, so if I had held onto those labels, I would have ended up in one of those two places. I came from a family that wouldn't allow me to go to the army. So I would end up, I would have to go to jail. I had no other choices. <laughs> but so the, the labeling, if you could touch on how you help people to take that label off and then live a labelless life. Is that a thing? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I invented it, something. <laughs> it, is, it, is now, it is now. Yeah, I believe, man, honestly, I believe the, the, the secret to all success is self-belief. Um, there's lots of different facets to that. There's lots of different other things you can work on, confidence and all the rest of it. I believe that self-belief, you've seen you've seen athletes, for example, there's athletes, they all have two arms, two, you know, two limbs, they can all run 10 seconds, but it's the one that can, the one that really truly believes in himself can, that does it that bit quicker that that uh that you you uh, excluding the excluding the sort of freak genetic that is you're seeing both but you'll get the analogy with them <laughs> in a minute it's like or even footballers a lot a lot of a lot of what's different about these guys is their mindset mm -hmm. you know they all they're all as fit as one another they're 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 two legs two arms six foot uh you know and and they all have the same fitness or similar fitnesses mindset has got they, there has sets thing sets people apart and i think i think that uh, self-belief is one of the keys and i work with a lot of people on self-belief um and, and like the only known method to man and creating faith and self-belief in somebody is auto suggestion that's the only, according to napoleon hill um it's, that's the only known method to man um and there's a process that i take people through and we go through that um but I, and I don't even do it just as like a practice. I, we, I, we do it even in everyday language, just shooting the breeze. I could be with a co with coffee with somebody and I'll check their language, like, yeah, yeah. like politely and gently. And they, you know, and, and you know, like, like, for example, I'll give you an example. People over in, here in Northern Ireland, we talk, everything's unreal. No, no, <laughs> it's not. Oh, that's, that's brilliant, Gary. That's unreal. Uh-uh. Yeah. Very real, man. You know, yeah. it's, it's very real. And so you start just changing wee triggers with languages and all the rest of it. I believe self beliefs the key. And I believe that can be taught and that can be learned. It's such a simple thing. And again, there'll be people listening to this going, what the, so what the fuck does it matter if you say it's unreal? And you're like... It'll remain unreal then. I, yeah, you'll you'll believe it. I, I used to use the example of the Grand Canyon and say to them, it must have been, in, must have been named by an Irish person. But the mm. size of this thing, ah, oh, it's grand. Like, mm. it's the fucking biggest canyon i've ever seen ah it's grand and uh, the sport the sport analogy for the belief i use it a lot as well because if you take the example of the four minute mile it was impossible until it wasn't and then when it wasn't everybody was doing it and now yes. people in the gym go and do it at the end of the workout do we four minute mile there just to finish up yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. i mean um the second thing i wanted to ask which is you had said when you're working with a guy, you're talking about the universal principles, but the mm. right way of using them. So do you find people that like probably just from reading the secret and not taking it all? Oh, I read, I read that you're like many times. You only read things once. That's a, you just read a book once. That's the whole point. And you're like my book, I have to buy two books. 
the one I read is a mess and the other one's nice for myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. This is the book I use as the example. It's my first ever book. And it's a Wing Chun book and it's tore apart and dog-eared and noted and bits yeah, yeah. are stuck back in because I couldn't find a second copy. So what do you think... Not what do you think, I suppose. How would, how would I go about... So let's say I've read The Secret and I know the universal laws and I've looked at a bit of that sort of stuff, but I've only read it and looked at it and it didn't really work. Like I spent three days thinking I'd love a million pound up here in my hand. Still not there. Yeah. How do we go about using it correctly? I think, I well, I think you need to be like a scientist. You need to really study these things. You need, really need to immerse yourself in that. You know, it's not a matter of reading a book once, reading a paragraph, even listening to me in this podcast now talking about it. You have to really be like a scientist. You have to, it's like one of the, it's like one of the, the first success principle in Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill is desire, right? That's the first one for a reason. You have to have that, uh, that uh. you have to have that desire for something. You know, like anybody listening to this, you know, if you're, uh, you know, you, 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 there's a, a, a certain person that you want to be with, you know, in that desire, you'll, you, you know, you'll, you'll message them, you'll meet them, you want to go on a bus to meet them, you'll, you'll take them out, you'll do what, you know, you have that desire. You'll walk over fire. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you see, for this stuff here, firstly, you can't play, play at it. It's like, you just can't, oh, I fancy, I've got to learn about this and, you know, I'll do that. It, you have to have the desire. You have to really, really want it. Really want it. Um, but that's like, let's, let's look at the law of attraction, for example. Uh, this this will be going out at a different time that I'll have done a law of attraction webinar, which is tonight at 7 p.m. Um, but the law of attraction, right? People think, you know, well, I'll just think this and that'll happen. Or if I think it enough, that will happen. Become like a student and a scientist, the understanding what it is. Nine out of 10 people have heard of the law of attraction from the book, The Secret. Yeah. Nine out of 10 people don't know what the two principles of the law of attraction actually are. Right? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so people are, we're reading stuff, but we're not digesting it. We're not, we're not wanting it enough. They don't desire 100%. it 100%. There's people here going... What the fuck? Are they? I've read that book. What are they? The two, right. the two principles. I'll, I'll quickly tell you them. One is desire. That's the that's the the positive force of it. Well, the negative force. What brings it to you is expectation. Actually, expect to receive the abundance, the good stuff in your life that you deserve. It. You're going to receive financial abundance. You're going to receive good health, great relationships. So you desire an expectation. And there's an exercise I take people through um, uh, on that there. So I'll know very quickly if you're practicing the law of attraction, right? I'll know very quickly. Yeah. And and most people aren't genuinely. Yeah. And yeah. that's why that's why most people don't achieve all the big stuff. It's only one, one, one and a half percent that achieve their 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 um, greatest goals. And there's a reason for that. Yeah. It's it's the self-belief with action and, and like you're saying there, the expectation. So I work a lot with people that want to lose weight and they tell me what they want to lose, and I go. When do you expect this to happen? What do you mean? When when are you going to achieve that? Oh, to be honest, I don't really believe I'm. I don't. I expect, and they really expect to feel. Yeah. Like, well, is maybe that why you always feel because you set yourself up. Yeah, yeah. Feel yeah, yeah, same yeah. as the kid yeah. going into an exam, and you go, you didn't try studying hard enough. You're you're going to go in here and feel this. So don't. Don't get your expectations too high. You're like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. No, get get them high. Get them through the roof. And uh, and 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 like I always get people to write down an exercise. The first three things. What are the top three things that you actually desire? Right, brilliant, million pound, brilliant, uh, X Y Z. Okay, right now, right beside it. Tell me what you actually expect to achieve. Oh, uh, maybe a hundred thousand pound within the next two years. Uh, well, maybe not that Ferrari. Uh, maybe maybe I'll drive a BMW. Um, uh, no, I'm not going to. I'm not going to have the three homes. I'll probably listen. If I end up owning the one home, I'll be happy, and that's all great, by the way. Yeah. But you're out of alignment. You don't expect what you as you desire, and that's screw off. That's not yeah. going to happen. Yeah, and that if you take that then into the to like the logical world, you're not your actions aren't going to determine the outcome because your actions will give you the results of what you you're actually expecting not what you yeah, say yeah, 
that yeah. you want yeah. and like you're, you're using the i love the idea of using the desire for partners because i would say to people all the time when you start dating somebody you'll do fucking you'll yeah. watch the shittest movies you'll go to restaurants yeah, you don't yeah, like you will anything do anything goes everything and then you stop dating up once they agree we are now a couple everyone just stops dating and you're like that's so ridiculous like imagine what your life would be like with your partner that you've been with for five years 20 years whatever if you dated every week like the whole thing was like like the way you treated dating and it's because most people expect i know but that's just the honeymoon period that's just the dating period it's just going to go into normal and you're like well that's not i don't want normal i don't want yeah yeah yeah, yeah. life to be dull. like normal to me is dull I don't care what your normal is. Your normal could be Scrooge McDuck diving into a pool of fucking coins. That's a fucking niche, <laughs> niche <laughs> flash that came into my head. Um, your, norm, your normal could, your normal is still born if you're not striving to, to yeah, grow yeah. more. And, and, and that fact that you're saying there and you've worked with so many people in this area doing it, that their expectations don't match their goals. And yet they probably still wonder why they're not achieving it. I don't know why I can't achieve this. You're like, well, you don't yeah. expect yeah. to achieve it. So where where would where would I start? Imagine now I'm sitting here and I listen and I think, fuck right, I don't have my actions don't match my goals, but they do match my expectations. So I'm doing I am doing it right. I'm just aiming the wrong way. So what would be your advice then for me to get aligned? I, I believe I believe through the power of auto suggestion, which is <clears throat> which is uh, starts with affirmations. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people affirmations. Oh, yeah, I've heard of them, but are you doing them correctly? It's like gratitude and focus gratitude. There's depths and levels to doing you know a lot of that stuff. And yeah. for me, a lot of people, you know, affirmations are only hopes, wishes, dreams. If you don't attach emotion and feeling to them. So for example, I say it's a monetary thing. I, I, I am going to be a, 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 a multimillionaire. Okay. Well, how does that make you feel? Now you start talking about it in present tense. You know, I am a multimillionaire. How does it feel? It feels amazing. It feels satisfying. Tell me how you feel. I feel, I feel really proud. How does your wife feel? How does your children feel? It's like real deep, deep sort of visualization about that affirmation and how you feel. And I take people under that. Mm. I take people under that. And uh, for me, that's 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 proper visualization, proper affirmations when you attach feeling to it. But here's 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 the next thing. Do that repeatedly and often like, like your life depends on it. Yeah. And people say to me, but why would I do it? Like my life depends on it because it fucking does. Yeah. And the life that you're trying to get, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because, because it does, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, and that's why I do everything a hundred mile an hour, no bricks. Um, and that's how I love my life. And, 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 and the people say, but surely you you know, when I take time out for myself, I'm going at that a hundred mile an hour. Yeah. You know, like for, I'll give you a small example. Here's an example. I'm going off on a tangent here. My son, <laughs> Good. My son, my son is going to a personal trainer at half five tonight, right? He goes, he goes to a personal, he goes to a personal trainer two or three days a week, half five to half six. He'll be going tonight. I used to rush home on my emails, on my Zooms, all the rest of it. What could I fit in in that hour? I actually don't do that now. What I do now is I go to a local coffee shop with a book and I spend that hour a hundred mile an hour on me You're chilling here yeah. on self-care and it gets I, I get all of my time for that 60 minutes i turn my phone off i turn it upside down even yeah and i sit on my I, I, so that you know everything i do is with is deliberate it's on purpose i've made a choice and um yeah don't even know how i ended up here but there you go <laughs> uh I, I, the idea of the phone screen, I have my phone on do not disturb at all times. Like it will never light up. It'll never do anything because I just, it does have no control over me. Um, and then again, the idea of taking the time out for yourself, like rather than, 
and a lot of people would do this they'd rush and try to get things like busy work trying to get the emails done trying to get a quick zoom in before you have to rush off to pick up the sun or just sit in the car or go to a coffee shop or shout at your son from across the gym work harder you know do, yeah, doing yeah. just being with yourself and being the time and i find people seem to be afraid of of that alone time the visualization thing I, it, it made me think of whenever i used to work with the fighters we would visualize everything like we would start at the end i would start with who are you going to be talking to or on the phone to after you're holding the belt when you get out of that ring who's the first person you want to ring like do you want to ring your mom your girlfriend your brother who's not going to make it to the fight that you're going to have to ring and then we pulled it right back what round what minute what second what move in the round and right back what are we gonna to have to do to get there and whenever you say that to the to people initially when they went oh, I, I visualize winning all the time and i'm like do you want to win have your whole head beat in first for five rounds and then win on points Mm. Well, no, I don't want that. How, how, what's the ideal one? I go out and knock him out straight away. Then let's do that. And I remember doing it with a fighter. It was an overhand right. I want to just go out. We touch gloves, we go back, we go out, and I just overhand right him and go home to fuck. I don't want to be in there. And you're like, let's just visualize that. Yeah. And the overhand right landed, but didn't knock him out. And then he took his back and, and won by a rear naked choke. But the, the visualization was so in depth that. The way I like to think about it, and I didn't, I didn't come up with this. It came from someone else. Einstein, I think, actually was who came up with. He should be able to explain that to his son, and his son should be able to explain it to his best friend. My daddy's gonna go out at in the first round, and wherever the venue is, everything. And I just love that idea that you're you're doing that for yourself. So I know fighting's a bit more extreme, but that it is a fight. You're trying to fight for the life that you want, so that you can sit on a podcast in the middle of the day in your office surrounded by all your accolades and showing like you know what i mean and, and be there instead of yeah. listening to this now in the car on the way home from your work that you hate going i wish i was like i wish i was like them so what i'm getting from everything you're saying is everybody has the potential everybody can be whatever the fuck they want pretty be. much so pretty much so like you know apart from the odd the odd the odd uh the, the odd obvious exception like the Elon Musk's of this world and people like that you know that are just extraordinary once in a lifetime or geniuses you know apart from freak things like that I think we're pretty much you know you can pretty much do most things if you really wanted it bad enough you know it's like even going back to the time thing right you know the you know not having enough time is just something in my head about that when you talk enough time people say oh, where, where would i find that time wherever the fuck it is right now that's yeah. where you'll find it it's the yeah. same way it's the same way money where would i get the money for that or where would people get the money for that to pay me wherever the fuck it is right now yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. we're not going out printing money off a tree you're not you're not you're not you're not reinventing the clock it's like It'll be wherever it is right now. Find it. How much do you want it? Make the time. Mm-hmm. Find it. Find the 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 value that creates the money. Find the you know the pain point, uh, the solution to somebody's problem. You know whatever it is, do whatever it takes. It's like me with we think network. My mother and father said to me, they'll never they'll never listen to me anyway. And I think so. <laughs> They said to me three four years ago, who's going to pay you for do who's where, where are people going to get the money for that there? I said, wherever it is right now, yeah, Where, wherever. <laughs> I don't, I don't care where people. I, I, that doesn't. That's not my concern. Yeah. Again, if they if they want it bad enough and they know you have the solution, then they'll find. Yeah. Like we, there's no doubt that you're the same as me. Like you've hired coaches at the start, thinking, how am I going to afford to pay this coach? Fuck it, it'll work out. I'll, I'll, it'll work. And then you do, and you just go in and do it. How do I, like? Whereas a lot of people would would stick at, it just reminds me of the old thing. I'm gonna join your class when I'm fit enough. When people talk about the gym, and I guess you're just gonna wake up fit. Yeah. And no. just, do it. Just figure it out on. Figure it out on the go. That, that, uh, that that's not to dismiss having plans and having strategy and all that sort of stuff. But there's a lot of things that you can do that don't require money. 
um, particularly initially. Yeah. Um, and like, you know, what's stopping people uh, messaging you, me, or 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 whoever whoever they're whoever it is they admire. Not that I'm putting myself on that pedestal, by the way. But, I am. I'm putting myself on it. <laughs> yeah, good, <laughs> good man. Uh, I'll let you put me on it. <laughs> and 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 you know what's what's stopping you turning up at events? What's stopping you asking somebody can you be in their podcast? What's stopping you dropping in and asking a question, gathering information? What's stopping you joining all the private Facebook groups in the world? What's stopping you setting up a profile in every social media platform, making sure you're omnipresent and your message is out there every day of the week, throwing the kitchen sink at it? That's what I did. That's what I did. Yeah, I give time. Like I knew I had money at the start, but I was like, I have no money, but I have time. So when people did stuff, I would say, like, I'm quite good at, at video and editing here. I'll come along and video some stuff for you if you want. Why would you do that? Oh, I just would like, I didn't want to say it because I really want to learn from you and I can't afford it. So I'd be like, I'm just happy to give back. And then you get into events. I would never get into at the start. And I, I've like through that met masters of Kung Fu that I would never have got to interact with and all sorts. And when people ask me, but I have it, yours is different. Like, the only difference is I did i kept yeah. like making random facebook posts for people and go here i seen you said this talk and i just took this off your talk and this picture that's like i don't know any of it send it to them and they're like oh fuck, that's brilliant do you want to watch this and see if you can pick another one up and you're like i'll give it a go sure it's a bit of time and that was the outcome i wanted was to learn the next thing so um i'm very conscious of your time and i, I know we could talk for ages so we'll hopefully get you back at some point have you any words of wisdom to round up with um see for me you know anybody listening to this um believe in yourself if you don't believe in yourself find somebody that does believe in you normally there'll be one person somewhere somehow a teacher um a relative a friend, there'll be that one person. And if there's nobody, keep listening to stuff like this. Keep listening to the good stuff that's available on YouTube. Keep reaching out to people. You might be surprised that uh, who would reply to you and give you that hand and give you that help and give you that encouragement. And maybe and maybe believe in you, even if you don't. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and another thing is as well, um, something I've realized the world is a big place, but it's also a small place. And now at the exact same time, there is a world of opportunity outside your town, outside your county, outside your country. Don't be pigeonholed by, um, you know, what if people in my country don't support me or what if there's not enough money here for this or people won't buy that. I just think, think, think big, think big think like think that the whole world is your customer and that all the people in it and that's something i have learned over the last 12 18 months most of my clients are from australia america europe and uh probably 20 percent of my business from northern ireland um maybe 15 and that's great and i'm very grateful for it and we provide an exceptional service and every it's, it's all brilliant but if i had a pigeonhole myself to thinking this is my, this is where I serve, this is who I am, this is where I am. I wouldn't have seen this world out here that's yeah, there yeah. for the, that's there for the taking. And we are taking it all and we're giving it all back at the same time. And uh, I just want to say as well, you know, it's good to feel good and, and, and thank God I feel good and I want you to feel even better and, uh, and, and keep going, keep striving, keep dreaming, keep working hard, keep believing, keep taking all the steps that you need to take to make it happen. And uh, do it like your life depends on it because it probably does, it probably does. And um, I appreciate I appreciate you too, brother, honestly. Um, see, take it, see, you know, this stuff here ain't for money. No. This stuff oh. here, this stuff ain't for money. Like we're shooting the breeze today. They share some positivity with the world, sharing some insights into our mindsets. Yeah. So I commend you for that too, because I know what it takes, man. To, Thank you very to, much. I, I know what it takes to actually be care enough to want to do it. 
<laughs> yeah. They care enough, they want to do it, man. That desire, they want to add value, do more, be more, and help people do the same. So I commend you for that too. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you coming on. Um, I it, It's something that's so overlooked is the given of the value isn't just about the two minutes you write a post or whatever. It's all the stuff you, you do of course. after the call and everything, which you wouldn't do if you didn't want to help people, which is... Yeah. Um, so thanks for pointing that out. Uh, where do people find you? Where's the easiest way to find you for people who want to reach out? Um, probably Instagram um, and all the platforms anyway. Uh, Think Network, I Think Network, big yellow um, logo on all the platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, YouTube, TikTok. Um, Gary Doherty Official on Instagram is where I myself personally mostly hang out. Um, the Think Network is run by, by my daughter. Um, so you won't get me in any of those platforms if you're messaging me there, um, but they will end up with me. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, but listen, I just want to thank anybody that does support and, um, and, and, and reach out anytime. If I can help, I will. Awesome. Thank you very much. I'll put all the links below so that everybody can find them easily. Guy, really appreciate you coming on and taking your time up. Thank you very much for your wisdom. And for everyone listening, have a super awesome day, whatever you get up to, and I will speak to you again soon.